Hello, my name is John Hathcote, and I'm going to give you a general overview of validity theory. So, there are base so this is basically validity theory 101. So let's say that you have a test, and there are basically two different questions that you may want to pose. First, do the scores, what do the scores mean? How do we interpret these scores? And second, how should the scores be used? So the information that I give you should help to avoid frustration and possible damage to your computer. Instead, we can simply get to work. So we'll begin with the most recent standards for educational and psychological testing. And we're going to use this to get a definition of validity. Validity refers to the degree to which evidence and theory support interpretations of scores for each proposed use of a test. So what does this entail? Well, there are five basic points. Strictly speaking, tests are not valid or invalid. Instead, the inferences and uses of a test are more or less valid. So validity is not an all or nothing statement. It is a function of evidential and theoretical support. I can also interpret the scores in numerous ways. Each interpretation must be supported by evidence and or theory, preferably both. I can also use a test to achieve multiple purposes, prediction, selection, placement, and so forth. So each use of a test must also be supported. Finally, despite what you may have read in research methods textbooks or have heard other people say, there's no such thing as different types of validity. Validity is a unitary concept. So according to Sam Mezik, there are two threats. First is construct underrepresentation, which indicates that a test is too narrow. So in other words, we're missing something. Second is construct irrelevant variance. So the differences in the scores that we see are affected by something that we don't want. It's too broad. So let's look at an example of construct underrepresentation. If I'm teaching a math course where students learn to add, subtract, multiply, and divide, I have a test with different scores. However, my test is only tapping into addition and subtraction. So I'm missing something important. What about construct of relevant variance? Here, here are my scores, and I hope that these scores reflect differences in mathematical knowledge. But if I mainly have word problems with complex sentence structures, then the scores may also be um, affected by, let's say, differences in reading ability. Validation is concerned with identifying and removing these threats. So let's look at evidence. First is test content. The content of a test should be relevant to what I'm trying to measure. We don't want irrelevant content. Second, the content should be representative. It shouldn't leave something out that's important to what I want to measure. The second source of evidence is response processes. So what cognitive processes are leading to the scores? So we can look at this by having people think aloud while they respond to the items, show their work, or design distractors to multiple choice questions to indicate some kind of error in thinking. We may also want to look at the internal structure. So in other words, does the pattern of correlations among the items make sense? And to do this, we can use basically exploratory or confirmatory factor analysis as well as item response theory. We may also want to look at relationships among the variables. So we can look at convergent evidence or correlations with similar variables, which is important if we want to replace one test with a different test. But we also need to look at discriminant evidence to rule out the possibility that the correlations that we see are due to measures sharing construct of relevant variance. We also need to look at consequences. So this includes intended consequences, perhaps the positive effects of using a test, as well as unintended consequences. Unintended consequences are an issue if they result from construct underrepresentation or construct irrelevant variance. So what is the take home message here? Each interpretation and use of a test must be justified with evidence and theory. Once again, there's no such thing as three different types of validity. Uh, this was rejected in the 1970s or so. So these are very complicated issues, and this is a basic introduction to validity theory. And I would like to thank you for your time.
created using Powtoon. <laughs>